Hi, everybody. Todd Conklin. I know lots of you get your information while you drive down the road or sit on planes or sit in meetings and look interested. And now you should know that three of my books are available for your listening pleasure on Audible. With the help of Jay Allen and Safety FM, we've produced three of the books, Workplace Fatalities, The Five Principles of Human Performance, and my very first book, Simple Revolutionary Acts, and they're available now where you get audiobooks. Broadcasting live from the Safety FM studios in Orlando, Florida, here is your host, Dr. Jay Allen on Safety FM. This episode of the broadcast and the podcast is brought to you by Safety Focus Moments. They're consultants that want to help you get the safety culture you've been looking for. For more information, go to safetyfocusmoment.com. Hello and welcome to Safety FM. This is Jay Allen. Can you feel it? Can you almost touch it? We're almost there. We're almost to June. We're almost in June. So depending on where you're at in the United States and if you have children, your children are almost out of school or depending where you're at, they could already be out of school depending on how you look at it. Anyways, how's everything going in your neck of the woods? I am just having a fantastic time here at Safety FM. Really glad with some of the interactions that we've actually been having as of late. But today we're going to have a very interesting one. And we're going to be talking to two gentlemen here today, John Hager and Christian James. And they're from a company called Industrial Biodynamics. And they're really well known for a slip simulator. So I want you to take a listen to the interview today. Oh, yes. And I'm going to let you know there's two people on this particular one. So let's not get them confused as we move forward. Enjoy the episode here today on Safety FM. You are listening to a renowned safety expert, Dr. Jay Allen, on Safety FM. Changing safety cultures, one broadcast and one podcast at a time. Join the fun on social media and find us on Facebook at Safety FM. So, however you guys want to do this, this is how we're going to go. Um... Whoever wants to start off, we can start it off that way. The only thing that I normally try to start with is how did you both get involved with this aspect of safety and how did it start and how did the journey get to where you're at now? Okay. Um, I guess I can start with that. Uh, Both Christian and I had worked for a company in Blacksburg, Virginia, uh, doing SBIR programs. And we had actually Christian had met a professor at Virginia Tech. Uh, Christian wanted to research boots for the military and looking at proper fitting of boots and reducing injuries in the military. And anyway, one thing led to another. This professor worked in biomechanics and one of the projects that he was working on was the project with UPS. And that was to help them investigate how changing some of these biomechanics can reduce injuries. Slip trips and falls were one of his major pieces, but the study was about how you step and how you walk and and your gait and things like that. And anyway, uh, through that relationship, built this interest level of can this project that he was working on become a business? And that's how we stepped into this. Yeah, I distinctly remember you know, being in the lab there and talking about these other projects. And then I think we looked in the corner and we're like, what, what is that big thing in the corner? You know, the big, which was a slip simulator, but we're like, what the, what the heck is that? And they said, Oh, that's the, uh, that's a slip simulator. Teach people not to, you know, slip, trip and fall. And I think our initial reaction was, I don't know, kind of similar online, you know, similar to what we see to a lot of people that when we kind of describe this company, they kind of say, you know, what what are you teaching people how to walk? You know, that, that, I don't know if that really makes sense at first, but, you know, it's a thing that we talked to him, talked about the research, talked about all the things that they've done to understand, you know, why this works. And then I think from then on, we were really interested in, in, you know, actually trying to help transition this thing to the commercial market. So did the common bond come about you both working at the other organization or was the common bond the Virginia Tech aspect starting off? Uh, Largely working for the other organization. 
uh, working on contracts together and then starting to investigate the idea of breaking out and doing something different. Yeah, and this was an interesting uh, opportunity, too, because we and John and I have been working on uh, hearing protection for the Navy, and that was a prime example of how do you get people to use hearing protection? Like, how do you actually help them understand that, you know, the way they're doing something now is not safe, but it has a very, very long-term implication that they just don't realize. And there's been a lot of people that tried to help make them realize that, and it just it's really hard to do. So this was a really interesting thing where we could actually help people understand the importance of slip, trip, and falls in a, you know, real-time kind of manner. So let's just use this as an example. Let's say, for instance, someone has not seen the slip simulator. How would you best explain it? I'll tell you, I've seen the news story. I think it was NBC, if I remember correctly, that they were talking about what UPS was doing. So if someone hasn't seen this, how would you describe it? And then we'll kind of give them some general direction on where they can actually go to pull it up online. But how would you describe it for someone who has not seen it? So to describe the equipment itself, it's a apparatus that has a floor system, it's about 20 feet long, and it has a structure over the above it that you can tie put somebody in a harness and tether them to this gantry to this structure above it and we put special shoes on their street shoes and we have them walk up and down this raised flooring and the purpose of that is we can alter that flooring to make it extremely slippery in fact it's been measured to be slipperier than ice or have a lower coefficient of friction than ice And the reason why we do that is we never get a chance to practice walking on a slippery or challenging surface. And in this way, we're able to keep you safe while putting you into into the absolute most hazardous conditions with regard to slips as well as to trips. Now, do you feel that you're essentially training people how to walk in these particular environments or what to do wrapping themselves around this particular device to get it moving forward? How would you how would you verbalize exactly what they're doing? Because keep in mind that right now we're trying to give people the old school style radio where you can only envision this currently by whatever you're picturing in your brain. So how would you give a little bit more explanation here? Sure. So if. With the harness on and the shoes on your feet and standing at the end of this 20-foot walkway, uh, we instruct you to go ahead and walk down this surface. And in some cases, we may make it slippery in certain spots or the continuous length of the surface. And we ask you to just proceed down this as if it was a normal day, not anticipating it being slippery. And we look for is your reaction, your response, your natural response to when you realize it is slippery. Um, You may decide that you're going to shuffle. You may decide to slow way down or tiptoe, or in some cases, people just completely freeze. But the idea is to, to allow you to experience that condition. And then we look at, observe what your response to that condition is. And then the result of that on the way back, we coach you into a different technique that has proven to make you more stable, to reduce that slip and therefore prevent the fall. And that's what we do as part of the training to then train you on being aware of your body, your posture, the way you step. And lo and behold, people realize a dramatic change in their stability. And that's part of the training process. Now, Christian, would you say that you're the creator of this or would you say John is or is it a combination of both? Oh, from a creator standpoint, well, this like we mentioned, this did come out of the uh, university research uh, with UPS Virginia Tech. So the the team that created it was over there at Virginia Tech. Uh, we teamed up with Dr. Thurman Lockhart, who was at Virginia Tech at the time. Uh, he was one of the, the first kind of creators and movers of this kind of technology Um so, yeah, the, the technology did come from that university research originally with UPS. And I guess just a quick backstory on that. So UPS was uh, trying to figure they had a huge injury problem. They had a huge slip, trip and fall problem. And they were trying to figure out how to train their new workforce. So the new workforce was coming in, the younger, younger age uh, individuals, and they just weren't they just weren't used to the old ways of, you know, here's your textbook, here's what you need to learn and sit down with that just wasn't working for them. So they're creating a hands-on training center. And again, slip slip, trip and falls is one of their big ones. They also had problems with vehicle egress and injury. Uh, And they, and so they came to Virginia tech and said, 
Uh, you know, what, what can we do? What kind of hands-on training can we do? We, the, the book stuff doesn't work anymore. What kind of hands-on training can we do? And so the slip simulator was one of the things that came out of that. You know, you always have to sit there and question, who was the first test subject to get on this device and try it? You know, because it is one of those things that it has to be funny because when you're having this in theory and all of a sudden they go, okay, we're going to give this a test. You don't know how this thing's going to operate yet. So you're the first yeah. one going through it. So how are the results? And were you there during those beginning phases or is this something that was already in place for a little while before you you started jumping into it? Uh, during the very, very beginning, no, we, we weren't there for that. Uh, we do have a video of the original test. They actually, the original system when they were researching. So this also actually came out of research uh, in the elderly, uh, trying to answer the question of why do the elderly fall more often than other individuals? So uh, kind of the precursor to this technology was devices at Virginia Tech where they would walk down with a similar gantry. They're strapped in so they can't fall and get hurt. They'd walk down a walkway, but instead of the walkway being kind of like ice and slippery, the walkway would actually move on them. It would actually slip and move from side to side and kind of cause them to slip. And then they had sensors and, and other things on there to measure that person's response. So they could kind of, and they did learn that. And this is, again, where the original slip simulator came from. They did learn that if you practice that, if you practice slipping and practice responding to that, your body kind of naturally learns how to navigate that that hazard and respond quickly and hopefully respond quickly enough. And it was shown that it will respond quickly enough to actually you know, reduce your risk of falling if it happens to you. Now, John, I have a question. When most organizations contact you, what do they end up telling you? How do they all of a sudden say, this is something that we need? This is something that we're having a problem with. So is this something that has already occurred inside of their organization where they're having slip trips and fall issues? Or is it something where they're going, we're trying to do preventative? How do the most calls come about? Uh, Typically, a call is because they have a problem. They do find that slip trips and falls are their number one or number two uh, claim. And... uh, probably best put by somebody we met down in Atlanta where she got her new job and went into the company and evaluated their safety concerns and found slip trips and falls were their number one. And she talked to her boss about it and said, well, what are we doing about this? I see the numbers just keep increasing. And the boss said, we're doing everything we can. You know, we're doing the OSHA presentations and we have posters and we talk about it morning meetings and it's just not seeming that there's any result that we're we're gaining here and so she did some research and she dug in and found virginia tech and then found us and basically that's a sample of a typical call where they say we have a problem and we cannot solve it and we hear that you have a solution that appears to work what can we do so of course either one who wants to answer this you know the question is going to come about most organizations will probably contact you and go what is going to be the return on investment in regards if we use your company in regards of having these things tested and proven? What is my reduction rate and what is my return on investment overall based on the amount of claims that I'm having? Give or take, always ballpark can never be specific because every company is going to be a little bit different. Right. So I'd like to answer that. So the uh, through that university research that we talked about with Virginia Tech doing these things and then Los Alamos National Labs actually conducted a big study. They were the really the first early adopter after UPS for this for the slip simulator. So they did a well-controlled study and showed there's a 70 percent reduction in slip trip and falls for people that got on the slip simulator and a 30 percent reduction for people that didn't get on but watched the training. So that is a big thing that we we tell potential customers and other people as far as, uh, you know, a study showing what their return could be. But referring to that return on investment, when we started this company six years ago, you know, we're looking at all the information and I was convinced that, you know, the way that we would sell this to people would be, okay, you know, let me know how many slip trip falls you had, you know, go figure out how much that costs you and we'll reduce that by 70%. There, you know, bam, there's your dollar value, right? So the thing that has actually been incredibly refreshing over the last six years is that, I don't, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I don't think we've talked to anyone who cared about the money at all. No one has cared about the money. It was, it was, it's actually very refreshing because all people care about is reducing their slip, trip, and fall action so people don't get hurt. So it's really been, and the big common thread between all of our customers is that they all have really high end safety cultures. So they're all about getting to zero, reducing all their accidents, and they're really, I mean, there may be some people out there that, you know, are really concerned about the money, but we haven't talked to them. It's it's all about just reducing slip, trip and falls and reducing accidents. 
Well, you did uh, you did use that term refreshing, and that is refreshing to hear because most organizations, I'm just going to tell you from experience, they want to know what the return on investment is. So if the people are actually contacting your organization and saying, hey, what can we do to reduce it? And that's what they're caring about. That is excellent to hear. Yeah, and it's very evident in the slogans that they put, whether it's in their literature or in cases of the mobile units that we sell. But Christian's right. Their focus has really been on reducing the accidents and making their employees safer. The discussions about the return on investment or financial savings and so on are usually a secondary discussion that happens long after they've got the equipment and they start giving us feedback as to the value they have found in the equipment. And it's usually an, oh, by the way, we had claims as high as over $100,000 for individual years ago. We're convinced that if we save one of those people, we've saved them ourselves lots of money and the return on investment is really endless. So explain to me exactly how the process works. So I contact your organization saying I'm having issues with slip trips and falls. And what are the next things that occur? Uh, we'll have a discussion with them about where their accidents are happening and try to get a feel for their safety culture and see if they're actively pursuing a safety program that will be effective for them. And then we start to talk about what their the makeup of their company, you know, how many people are in their organization, what their goals are, and are they one establishment? Do they have multiple locations? Because we want to be able to provide them with some options. Uh, so we do have a product which we call a static system that gets installed in your facility. Uh, we also have mobile units which allow our clients to take that slip simulator to multiple locations. Now, what do you see organizations that mostly are in what kind of field that will contact you? Do you see this commonly? I know that we've mentioned UPS several times, but it's mostly transportation companies or what are you seeing a good mixture of? Uh, we A lot of it actually is in the power industry, whether it's power distribution, nuclear power, um, electrical service companies. We have a few in healthcare, food distribution, shipping. Uh, it, it really covers the spectrum of companies. It's those, as Christian said, that embrace a very strong safety culture, which seems to be strongest in the power industry. Uh, they're the early adopters, and they're the ones who, by word of mouth, spread the value of different products. But we are making inroads even into pharmaceutical and just a variety of businesses. Well, it's funny that you say that because, as you are aware, the power companies have done something with the Department of Energy titled Human and Organizational Performance. And it's interesting on how they're so far ahead in regards of some of the safety systems that are out there. Now, earlier, Christian had mentioned that you had done some work with Los Alamos. And how was that experience, especially when you said that they were one of the early adopters in regards to bringing you in and really testing it? How did that whole transition go? How does that initial call start? And then all of a sudden for them to have you come out to New Mexico and go, let's go down this path and take a look. So they were the, uh, I think they were the first adopter after UPS. So that was back in the days when this was still uh, considered on the university research side. So they actually reached out to uh, Thurman Lockhart again at Virginia Tech, who was, uh, you know, going to conferences, kind of giving presentations on this and showing that it did work for UPS and also showing the research in his lab and how it backed up of people, you know, kind of learning how to handle and navigate uh, these kind of conditions and how it really worked for them. So they contacted him and he helped them set up what we kind of refer to as one of the research uh, grade units over there at Los Alamos. Uh, and once they kind of got the kinks out of that and got it running, uh, they train thousands and thousands and thousands of people at their organization. And again, they produced that study showing that 70% reduction. Uh, our uh, trainer here that goes out and actually does certifications for new units that we install uh, was the lead trainer over there at Los Alamos. Uh, his name is Jim Kleinstuber. Uh, so we did come in a little bit, uh, not too long, but a few years after they implemented it there at Los Alamos as far as us commercializing this and uh, the technology. Uh, but we did end up... Uh, hearing all the stories and picking up all a lot of the experience that Jim Kleinstuber did have over there leading the training at Los Alamos. So how did they feel about actually selling the device to you for you to actually do it into a commercial aspect? How did that go? How does that even, how does that even start? Yeah. So that's, that, that was a good question. So that is, 
uh, we ended up partnering with uh, Thurman Lockhart of Virginia Tech. So the technology was, uh, I don't know if open source is the right word, but it, the technology was um, developed there at Virginia Tech. But it was also, uh, you know, again, through the presentations and other things at conferences going out, uh, a lot of the information on how to do it was was presented to people. And there are other uh, organizations that also kind of built their own and, and made their own slip simulator and also had good results. Uh, but we worked with Thurman to help kind of commercialize that research grade product that a slip simulator product that he had and kind of put a lot of new uh, features into it and made it a lot easier to make uh, a lot easier to set up transport all those kind of things a lot more durable uh, into an actual commercial product when we formed the company so what is the size differential between the one that is the non-mobile version and then the mobile version what are we looking at in the, in the differences there so the the system itself the size of the floor system and the Essentially, the space that it takes up is about the same. The real difference is that in a trailer, the gantry is instead a track that's suspended from the ceiling. And of course, your space is limited to that eight foot wide space. But we have uh, trailers that have stages that fold down with enclosures on them so we can create more of a mobile classroom. Uh, we also have ones that have large concession doors that open up to allow you to be at conferences or out in parking lots to have more of that crowd kind of interactive atmosphere. You know, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm regretting not being in Virginia and not giving this machine a shot today. I mean, I'm really heartbroken about the whole thing, too. But it's one of those things that it sounds so interesting. Now, if people want to see what this thing looks like, where can they actually go to get some more information? So certainly they can go to our website. Uh, we have a variety of videos on the website. Uh, some of them are from customers' videos, and some are from videos that we have shot. Uh, they're welcome to give us a call and talk to Bill Thorne, and he can connect them with some of our customers around the country. One of the things, again, using Kristen's word refreshing, is that our customers who have embraced the product and are so pleased with it that they're willing to have to host people that are potential customers for us or people that are just interested in in seeing the product uh, they've been very open about sharing their experiences and that's been very helpful for us and i think it also just helps show their safety culture and how committed they are to it so let me just ask so how do you decide to go into this side of the industry because you i mean experience wise when i start looking through the different things that both of you've done how does this actually fall into your wheelhouse of going, boom, this is what I want to do? Why all of a sudden this? Was there some? Was there an event that occurred inside of your lifetime that you said, this is what we need to be doing? Either one. You know, and, and Christian summed it up well with the fact that our last experience was with hearing protection. And as he said, when you're dealing with 18-year-olds on a flight deck and trying to explain to them the value of hearing protection and the fact that Someday they will look back and wish they actually learned how to use hearing protection properly. You know, trying to explain to somebody about the future and why taking action now can help make their future better. Um, that was a frustrating but a very good learning experience. And then to have something that in some ways is similar in the case of trying to explain to people that there is a better way to walk when you encounter these conditions that'll keep you safe and therefore reduce the chances of a life term, you know, lifetime injury. Um, I guess it was that intrigue, but I guess moreover, it's the idea that we're making a difference. Um, you can see it in the clients, you can see it in the customers. And just as a small aside, in the very early days, when I went on my first outing with one of our systems, and to be honest, I wasn't even certain whether this was a product that truly worked at the time. That was the very beginning. And we went to a customer site and lo and behold, a bunch of very large, you know, hardworking individuals showed up and looked at us and said, like Christian said, you're going to teach us how to walk. Well, some of those guys got on and they got off and they shook our hand and said, I couldn't believe I could learn something, but that thing is amazing. And that kind of reward, it makes this important. Well, it's, in, it's interesting when you start thinking about it, because when you say that, you have to, you sit there for a moment and go, okay, so you're going to 
to some extent, teach me how to walk under certain environmental conditions and certain issues that might occur. And I'm just trying to figure out if I'm about to fall, I know there's probably some moves that I'm going to do. Not graceful moves. Let's just be realistic, but I'm going to do some moves before I about, I'm about to fall. So how do you, how does that whole learning process go? Especially when they go through the experience and, and you go, okay, this is what you're going to need to do if this is to occur. Now I'll tell you, I've seen some of the videos and they give some information on there, but how does that whole mindset change for people of regards of this is going to be the pattern that you need to follow going forward? Yeah. So I think the biggest part of it is when we experience a slip, it's out in the real world. It's a rare occasion and we don't really know how to respond And what this training does for you is allows you to experience that, realize that if I wasn't tethered to this gantry here and the conditions were this bad, I would have been injured. And it kind of lends ourselves to wanting to learn, wanting to get a solution. And so when you then get trained in a different technique to navigate this kind of condition and you get somewhat of an aha moment, You kind of tuck that away in your head and say to yourself, here's my response when I encounter a condition like this. And again, the goal isn't that we want people to work in these conditions and walk up and down the street in these conditions. It's more when you encounter these conditions, here's how you can change your posture, the way you carry yourself and get to someplace safe. And that's really the goal here is to keep us safe, keep us from falling. Right. And, and I think the other facet of that is the awareness. So you, you you do go through and learn this technique. You learn how to deal and get out of this kind of situation if you do find yourself in it. The other thing is awareness on slip, trip and falls. So if you go, you know, we all know slip, trip and falls are usually number one and number two on almost every industry list. But if you go talk to the person working in any of these locations and say, what's the biggest hazard today? It's incredibly rare. They say, I'm going to actually slip and fall in the parking lot, getting out of my car, going into the office. Like they're going to say something like, you know, I'm going to get caught in a machine or get hurt, you know, in those, you know, dramatic ways. But to them getting on in this situation and walking on the slip simulator, you just see it in their face where they say, oh my gosh, this is, this is incredibly dangerous. So all of a sudden their slip, trip and fall awareness just, you know, went up to where it should be. It matches the actual, you know, risk that they actually will uh, experience. So John and Christian, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our Safety FM listeners? I guess the only other thing, you know, we talked a lot about this being a slip simulator, and it is. It is also a trip simulator in a sense. So addressing slips, trips, and falls. One of the things that we did where we advanced this product from what it was in the research days to what it is now, it's a modular system that allows us to change the conditions. So we have step over devices. We have slope devices and uneven floor tiles and just different conditions that are relatable by our clients to areas where they've had accidents, you know, transition from a carpeted surface to a slippery surface or stepping over something like a parking curb or a pipe or walking down a city sidewalk where the concrete is never flat and smooth. It's always raised and those small little half inch, um, steps right there are are things that do lead to accidents okay and if you could actually give our listeners your website one more time just to make sure that they can actually get more information about the product sure it's our website is uh, www.inbiodyne.com so that's i-n-b-i-o-d-y-n.com well christian and john i appreciate you coming on to safety fm The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise, without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen. SafetyFM.com Could you imagine changing the derogatory, incorrect information on your credit report by a click of a button? How would that make you feel? 
What if I told you this one book could change your credit history forever? The best part? It's yours. Absolutely free. Go to issueswithcredit.com. No gimmicks. No information required. Just click on the link and download. Issueswithcredit.com. We're here to help. 